Hi folks, John Kitts here, playing Sail Away, the sailing video, no, the sailing tutorial, no, the sailing simulator, that's it. And if you watched the previous video, you will know that I am doing the tutorials. And hold on a second, I have to turn my mic off because I need to cough. Okay, that was an interesting cough. And here I am back again. Now, uh, just as a starter, I would say that I would appreciate it if you would hit the uh, thumbs up button, or like button, just below the little, little video there. And also, if you could, please hit the subscribe button, which if you look in the lower right hand corner there's a little symbol there is click on that lo and behold you are now subscribed okay here we are back in the game sail away and we are about to move from uh whatever the video was called or whatever the tutorial was called onto one that's called curve position so let's click the yes button There we are. And it's night time. Night time ain't no time to be in this neighborhood. Now. I don't know why it's night time. Yes, I do. Because we are just off the coast of Africa. The west coast of Africa. And we are sailing a boat them of which I do not remember the name. Anyway tutorial we say let's go we all know the shape of an airplane wing yeah, that's an assumption there's some people who don't know it but there you go it's round at the front and the thickest part is about one third in and it's thin at the back this aerodynamic shape causes the least drag and it's also the shape of dinosaurs, but that's another thing. Wing shape. On the boat, on the sailboat, we don't want to drag either. We don't want to drag either, especially not when going duck. Uh, especially not when going upwind. So the wind shape, the wing shape, with the curve at one third would seem ideal. Light winds, one. However, there's always a however. Or there's always an however. When there is little wind, we want as much power from the sail as we can manage. Who cares about aerodynamics when there's hardly any air to be dynamic with. And the boat is making adjustments on its own here. In light winds, the depth of the curve is as deep as we can manage. If the curve was positioned towards the front of the sail, if that curve was positioned towards the front of the sail, the angle of attack would be very big and we would not be able to sail very high upwind. This is a light wind, remember? If that curve was positioned toward the front of the sail, the angle of attack would be very big. And we would not be able to sail very high upwind very high speed or a very high angle. I'm assuming they mean very high speed. Not sure. Click next. Curve back. Better would be to ease the deepest region of the sail more backwards to give the air the opportunity to adjust more slowly to the deep curve we want to use.
I thought the previous diagram showed more of a curve. But they say we ease off on the sail, which makes more of a curve. Better would be to ease the deepest region of the curve, which I'm assuming is this one, more backwards to give the air the opportunity to adjust more slowly to the curve we want to use. Okay, the wind's going slowly along here, so if you give more of a curve, not quite sure how that makes it move more slowly along, give it more time to adjust. Because the sail is still the same length relatively. But I get the picture. Uh, by going more slowly, the wind is going to slide along the sail, or by having more curve. So, at least at the beginning, here, it's going to go a little more slowly along here because it's more curve. But then this curve is still the same length, so it's just going to drop off more quickly at the end. But anyway, yes, there's the, that's the gist. Also, when you pull the curve to the front, most sails also become less deep. And that would be a waste of sail power less deep. I just remind you folks that if I said this before, I am not a sailor. I have no idea what I'm doing here or what I'm talking about. So if I appear confused by this terminology, it's me. Also, when you pull the curve to the front, you pull the curve to the front, assuming that's more of the front, most sails also become less deep. Most sails also become less deep. And that would be a waste of sail power. Don't know what they're talking about. Strong winds. In strong winds, you want to reduce the pressure in your sail as soon as you can. And that means that you would want the little bit of curve that you have in these winds to be far forward. The further forward, the easier the wind is released. Going strong wind, you want to reduce the pressure as soon as you can, and that means that you would want the little bit of curve that you have in the wind to be far forward. sense, I don't know what they're talking about. Next, downwind. Finally, when you sail on a broad reach or downwind, the curve location doesn't really make a huge difference anymore. You probably want it more towards the center of the sail, unless the wind is really strong. Okay, I got that part, it's easy enough. Summary, light wind, curve centered, light wind, curve centered, strong wind, curve forward, upwind, curve forward, downwind, curve centered. What you do when the settings are in contradiction is where experience comes into play. Sailing is not an absolute science you do when the settings are in contradiction.
I think clicking OK is what we do right now. And that was the end of that tutorial. OK. Top of the sail goes at our next tutorial. Boom angle. When we sa say it again, when we sail, we tend to look at the angle of the boom. They say boom. Isn't it boom? B O O N. Boom. They say boom. I say boom. You say tomato. I say tomato. At the angle of the boom to judge the sail angle to the wind, but that works only for the bottom part. When we are when we sail, we tend to look at the angle of the boom to judge the angle sail angle. All right, yeah, we're looking at. Can I move this? Yes, we're looking at this angle. Judge the sail angle, okay. But that works only for the bottom part. Yes, okay, got that. Whereas that large piece of cloth high in the mass is just as important, or actually, it is the most important. So we want to be aware of what's going on up there. Top important. First, the force of the wind in the top half of the sail has much, has much more effect on heel than the wind blowing at the bottom. Well, that makes sense. It's more torque up here. It's going to tilt the boat over more. Simply because the side force is applied higher in the mass and has therefore more effect on the heel. Just repeats themselves. Okay, second, the wind near the Earth's surface is disturbed and slowed down, whereas the wind higher in the sky can flow freely and blows stronger. Okay, what they're talking about there, I think, is that low down to sea level, I don't know why they said earth, but the sea level, you're going to get cross currents, etc., going on down here, so it's more, as they say, disturbed, whereas the further up you are, then you get more of a, say, pure wind, and it uh, therefore going to blow uh, more strongly. Next, sail angle. Now let's say heel is not an issue. We just want to use the sail as efficient, efficiently as possible. You'd think the sail angle at the top and the sail angle at the bottom would need to be the same. Heel is not an issue, we just want to use the sail as efficiently as possible. You'd like the sail angle at the top and the sail angle at the bottom. You'd think the sail angle at the top and the sail angle at the bottom would need to be the same. I don't know if I think that or not. Sorry, it's not. If, for instance, the true wind is four knots, true wind over here, true wind down here, uh, coming at an angle of 90 degrees, and the boat sails two knots, this means the apparent wind angle is 60 degrees. According to that over there, it is. If you're using this as an example, I assume that's what they're doing. That's a complex calculation to come to that, but there we go. The wind higher up is almost always stronger than blow down. Uh, at the level of the bottom of the sail, the true wind is, is may only be three knots. Drop the is. At the level of the bottom of the sail, the true wind may only be three knots. 
to five or even six knots at the top. Okay, this is also this also affects the apparent wind angle. Okay, apparent wind angle relative to bottom and top. I'm assuming. Right, because it's going faster up here, therefore the apparent wind is going to be uh, faster than down here. Ease the top out. This is why you need to let the sail open up a bit to ease the top to align it better with the angle of the wind. Let it open up a bit. Not sure what they how to do that because I ain't no sailor, baby. Uh, effect strength. This effect of a different apparent wind angle is strongest on a tight reach with a true wind angle of 90 degrees. I forget what reach means. The effect is also strongest in light winds. The stronger the wind blows, the smaller the difference in apparent wind angle. I think yes. I'm getting that. The wind is blowing faster with more force, therefore it's not as countered as much by cross currents, etc. down here. So the difference between the two angles. I don't know why that went all splashy there on us, but it did. Anyway, the top and the bottom will not be as divergent. Summarizing. So, if all that matters is to get the most performance out of the sail, you would have to open the top in light winds, and I don't know how we do that, close the top in stronger winds, open the top on a tight reach, close the top upwind. reduce the heel. But this is not entirely true. Thanks for that. As the wind gets stronger, maximum efficiency is no longer the most important. You need to reduce heel as much as you can by easing out the top of the sail. The force in the top is reduced and the boat becomes more upright. Okay, you're talking when they say more efficient, you mean more efficient in the sail. Uh, no, more, more efficient in the speed of the boat. Let's read that again. But this is not entirely true. As the wind gets stronger, maximum efficiency is no longer the most important. Mass, maximum efficiency in the sail is no longer important. You need to reduce the heel as much as you can by easing out the top. So, yeah. By reducing the heel, you're getting more efficient transfer of wind power to speed. Summary. Looking at the wind strength, this is what the top of the sail should be. Open in light wind, more closed in moderate, open in strong wind. Okay, right, because in strong wind you won't, don't want to keel anymore. Heel, sorry. You don't want to heel as much, so yeah, you open it again. And summary two, looking at the wind angle, this is what the top of the sail should be. More closed upwind, open on a tight reach, half open on a broad reach and downwind. Do we want to start on another tutorial? Yeah, I guess we can. Uh, next tutorial will be called The Depth of the Sail. Okay, flattening sail. 
a sail is attached to the mast, let us hope, or the forestay on one side. If you sorry, if you pull the other end tight, it becomes flat. If you pull the other end tight. more flat okay uh, could be on a rail going up the mast or it could be on a f forest day up this way so if you pull the other end I'm assuming they mean this if you pull that tight it's going to come it's going to become more flat uh, for the mainsail, this means pulling the line at the end of the boom, which is down there, pulling it backwards. The vang, which is this thing here, to prevent the back of the sail from bending outwards due to the pressure of the wind and thus flattening the sail. I guess they mean the back of the sail is that. Um, you will need to pull some downward ten put some downward tension on the boom by pulling the vang or easing the traveler. Okay, the traveler, isn't that little thing here. If there's a rail to pull that. This is the vein. We're easing the traveler. the technical part of it, I, I don't understand, but I get the point. Sail cut. Sail makers give their sail a curved front. If you force that in a straight mast, the sail becomes horizontally curved. along the front, if you force that in a straight line, try to straighten it, is that what they're saying? If you force that in a straight mast, the sail becomes horizontally curved. Um, okay, this is a fixed length. Force that, say, by pulling it in there and in there to straighten it out, and it's still a fixed length. Then it's going to mean it's kind of like a loose area here, so it would be curved horizontally. I have no idea, I'm just guessing that. Mass bend. Most boats have a mass that can bend a little if you pull the back stay and if you pull the back stay the mass slightly bends. It fits the curve of the front of the sail and the sail becomes more flat. Um, okay, that's the back stay. Most boats have a mass that can bend a little, and if you pull the back stay, the mass slightly bends, and it fits the curve of the front of the sail. Okay, remember, okay, this is a curve. If you just say, if you pull the back stay, just that, the mass is going to curve back, and so the, since the 
sail is already slightly curved uh, and the sail becomes more flat. Yes. Because we don't have this horizontal bend here. The foresail sheet. The foresail is a little harder. Pulling the sheet tight to make the sail more flat will also adjust the angle of the sail. depends on the angle in which the sail is pulled. A force that points backwards will flatten the sail, whereas pulling inward will affect the angle. Okay, that makes sense. You're pulling back. Can't move that now. Okay, you're going to pull that, if you pull... If you pull... This one, I guess, that's going to... Well, it's going to change the angle. It's probably not a good example. But maybe it is. So if you pull this one, which is this one, it pulls the angle of the uh, foresail back, whereas you're pulling this one, even though it seems to be adjusting the angle as well, it's also going to tighten it more. The lead car. This is why race boats have barber haulers on the sheet. Almost, on most sail away boats, you can adjust the position of the lead car. Placing it further back will flatten the sail. Placing it further forward will make the sail more round. Okay, I don't know if we have a lead car here or not. Is that the lead car they're talking about? I think what they're saying is you're, if this is further back, if that's the lead car, maybe that's the lead car. If it's further back, then you're going to tighten the sail when you adjust from there. If it's not further back, then it's going to pull this line inward. So, we'll make the sail more round. Okay, maybe. Fourth day. The front of the foresail is attached to a steel wire. It this if this is pulled very tight, the sail becomes a bit more flat. If this is given some slack, the sail becomes more curved. The fourth day being I just barely see it there, I think. Let's see if I can get up here. tell from here. Not very well, anyway. Force day would be there from the top of the mast down. And if you tighten that, if you tighten that, this is pulled very tight. The sail becomes a bit more flat. I guess the force day is a force day with the sail runs along. It's running along the force day. So yeah, I can see if that tightens the sail. And if you let it loose, it's gonna curve the sail. I don't know. 
halyard and backstay. This is controlled by the tension and or the tension of the backstay. This, the, okay, say that again. This is controlled by the halyard tension and or the tension of the backstay. Because when you pull the mass backward, you automatically also pull the front of your sail tighter. sense. When you pull the mass backwards, it's going to get tighter there. I'm not sure what force stay and how you'd have to do with tightening the mass. Okay, summary. Here we go. The force, the forceful depth is controlled by position of the lead car. Backwards is flat. Tension of the halyard. Tight is flat. Tension of the back or the back stay. So there, sorry. Back stay tight is flat. Got that. The mainsail depth is controlled by oat hall. Tight is flat. Tension of the back stay tight is flat. And we are running a bit over time. So we are not going to start the next tutorial. We are going to cease and desist. So, uh, if you um, would like to... I have no idea what I'm saying, folks. Anyway, if you want to show your support for the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you want to give some feedback, leave some comment. And uh, maybe even hit the old thumbs up button. So, uh, all I can say is, until next time, please do take care.